What is going on, beautiful people? Today, we're talking about how do narcissists behave at work? How do narcissists behave in the workplace? How do they act in the warehouse or the office? If you're new here, my name is Lee Hammock. I'm a clinically diagnosed narcissist, and welcome to episode 992 of the Narcissist Code. Boom, drum roll please. Welcome back, welcome back, welcome back folks. So yes, narcissistic people, toxic ass people in the workplace. How do they act? How do they behave? What is going on inside the mind of a narcissistic person that is that you, that you work with? This is one of the questions that I get a lot, y'all. The narcissistic person in my life is my boss or my coworker and whatnot. Y'all, so we're going we're going we're going to take y'all We'll tackle all of that in this one video because I don't like doing a series. I have a video series coming up here pretty soon, but I don't like doing a series on YouTube because I don't know, YouTube just doesn't show them to people. <laughs> Let's keep it hot. Um, so yeah, if you work with a narcissistic person, right, and y'all are on the same level, they typically want to get to know you. I mean, so, a lot, they could, so they could just absolutely ignore you, spread rumors about you, and make it seem like you're a horrible coworker or a horrible friend or whatever that is. And, but you do get the narcissistic coworker, right? That will try to get to know you. That will, it's kind of like they love bomb you, but they, it's like a work bomb. Because you have this, like a lot of times, if you're working nine to five or whatever, inclu including commute, you might spend more time at work than you do at home with your family. You know, more time awake at work than you do at home with your family because you're sleeping and you're working and whatever. So you might spend more time at work with these people. So they might work bomb you or friend bomb you or whatnot in the workplace so now you have a work friend you see what i'm saying now you you're sharing your deepest darkest secrets with this person at work you're sure y'all you, are going back and forth because you feel like they're sharing information with you as well you might have feel like you might have felt like you found your best friend then all of a sudden the rumors start the the, the you start hearing the little rumors about you you're like wait wait what they take the information that you tell them and they might use it they might weaponize it against you in other friend groups, so let's say there's if they're separate, if they're separate friend groups at work, right? If you like you, there's a certain group of friends that you, certain group of people that you don't like at work, but the narcissistic person happens to be friends with them as well. They're going to go back and forth spreading rumors about you. They might talk junk about the other group of people to you, but they're also doing the same thing about you to them. Like a lot of narcissists or like gossip, you know, they, they're super gossipy, super chatty as hell. They like to spread rumors. They like to, you know, start a little, like start little smear campaigns in the workplace. And sometimes they don't know you, like when people don't know where the rumor starts, it typically starts with that narcissistic person because there are a lot of narcissists, y'all, in the workplace and just in real life in general, they like to scheme they like to scheme. They like to turn people against each other because it makes them feel empowered. They like to do things in the workplace because it makes them feel like they're in control of something. Even if they're like a lower level employer, entry level employee, I'm going to say lower level, an entry level employee, they feel like they are entitled to more benefits and more things because they are them. That's when, you know, that's one of the signs of narcissism is soup is extreme entitlement. You know, sometimes they might seem like they're more covert and you won't be able to tell that they're narcissistic people. But a lot of times you get to the workplace, you get the loud, boisterous person that is on the same level as you. That acts like your boss. That acts like your supervisor. That tries to tell you what to do because they feel like they're above you just because they are them. They feel like they're entitled to be above you. And if you don't, like I said, if you don't get in line with what they want, that's when the rumors will start. That's when they might try to get you fired from your job. That's when they might actually start to try to like... If you just, I don't know, if you have something going on at work with somebody else, they might try to take your work life and interfere with your family life. They might start telling, spreading rumors to your household about you. Hey, so Lee, hey, Lee's at work. Uh, just so you know, I know I don't know you, but Lee's at work. You're, hey, I work with your husband, Lee. And he's at work getting close and snuggling with somebody else. Just, just, feel like, just feel like I should let you know. I'm not trying to start anything. I just feel like I should let you know. They love, like, now, narcissists love that type of stuff right there. I promise you they do. I promise you. That's one of the things that narcissists love to do. They love to kind of be covertly in the workplace, covertly be the center of attention, but not also be, not also be the center of attention. It's like they're covert. Like, they know they started these rumors. They know that they got the work, the workplace in disarray. 
but nobody really knows who can pinpoint it to except the narcissist like no i did this they love watching a plan come together in the workplace especially if it leads to somebody getting fired somebody getting in trouble a friendship dissolving them getting promoted or whatever them getting put above you in the workplace that happens so damn much y'all so that's what i'm telling people if you're dealing with a narcissistic person this is part of the process that you might have to encounter this is part of the thing that you might have to deal with right here so that narcissistic person in your life they typically don't care how what they are doing is going to affect you. You know, they typically are only there to serve themselves. So they don't care how what they do, their actions, their behaviors, how they are going to affect you in any way, shape or form. So you have to prepare yourself for that. You have to get, you know, you have to keep it moving for that, in, in that dynamic, in that instance right there. Because if you don't, then you get tied, tied up in these situations. You know, but like I said, if that. If the narcissistic person in your workplace is your boss, oh my goodness, or the CEO, somebody, one of the, one of the quote, one of the quote unquote higher ups, it could be a whole new space to be in. It could be a whole new relationship dynamic to deal with. It could be a whole, yeah, I'm, I say it can drive you crazy. It can literally drive you crazy because the way that they feel, their mood, their mood, their internal mood is going to affect the whole entire workplace. Like, it's really like being in a, a toxic, abusive relationship because you don't know what person is coming through that door. You don't know if your boss is going to be happy or sad, and that's going to affect the work. Work that could definitely affect, affect the effect, affect the workplace in a negative way. And they might, if you are the target of their anger or their rage, even if you didn't do anything to them, they're going to take it out on you. So you might not have done anything to wrong this person. But they feel like they need to target you. They feel like they need to take it out on you. You didn't wrong me, but I'm to make myself feel better about myself. I'm going to try to make your life harder. So you do get a lot of toxic narcissistic bosses that will try to make your life harder because they are not happy with themselves. Even if they are your boss, you know, they act like they like not only do they act like they're your boss, they act like they, they rule you. Like they claim dominion over your life. They love y'all. Narcissists love being in positions of power. And I'm going to do another video about that, but they love being in the position of power because it makes them feel just invigorated. Like, you know, when you grow up, you know, y'all might not know this, but growing up as a narcissist, you feel like there's a lot of stuff that's outside of your control. So when you get a position of power and things are inside of things, you can control things. Like I'm in control of things. It, impact, it makes you feel so powerful to feel like you were in, finally in control of something. So you take that control and you, you, you wield it like a damn sword. Like you start bopping people with your sword, with your, with your controlling sword. Anytime somebody says something to you, it's like you're taking your childhood trauma and anger out on them. Spap, you, they unsheathed, unsheathed that childhood trauma sword and start smacking their employees with it. You know? And they typically, and sometimes they do it in a very covert manner. It's just like being in a toxic workplace with a narcissistic boss is kind of like you're the, you're their children. They're just like a toxic parent. They have scapegoat children and golden child children slash employees. You know, they have the golden employees and scapegoat employees. The scapegoat employees get the, the crap end of the stick, so to speak. The scapegoat employees get treated like crap. Everything gets blamed on them. They get the, they get the, they, they get forced to work overtime. They get, all the, 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 the crappy jobs, the crappy, you know, they never get, they rarely ever get any type of recognition for the jobs that they do. And the boss will take, if they do good, the boss will take credit for it. Like, yeah, I, I did that for them. Yeah, congratulations to them. But they wouldn't have done that without me. You see what I'm saying? They do that type of stuff right there. They pull you into it. They, they pull you into that space. They pull you into that dynamic. They yank you in there. And that's the type of stuff that they will continuously do because that's what the type of stuff they like, like they love to do. That's what narcissists love to do. They love to be in control. They love to have that power. They love to, you know, be in charge of things. So they love to take credit for it. They, the scapegoat employee gets beaten down, gets blamed for everything. Like you're always, like you always feel like you're skating. You pretty much always feel like you're skating on thin ice. Pretty much, that's the saying that a lot of people use. You're skating on thin ice because this toxic narcissistic boss makes you make, makes the workplace damn near unlivable. Like you know, like, I don't. Th th my workplace feels uninhabitable. It's so toxic here. I hate working here. I hate being here. So a lot of people get into these spaces where that's the dynamic right there. You fall into this space. You fall into this kind of chasm of toxicity in the workplace. But the golden employee gets the praise. You get praised. You damn near all the, you, you damn near all the boss's kid. You know, you're like the boss's child, which in that space right there, you're like the boss's child. Like they treat you like a kid. Like they're, 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 they're model. Like if they, 
the, the boss sees themselves in you. So they treat you good. You get the praise. You know, you like the second in command sometimes and whatnot. You know, other empl- they they use triangulation in the workplace as well, where they will turn, they will put, they will pit employees against each other. Like they will pit, like put the golden employee against the scapegoat employees. You know, to make it feel like they they will just give the scapegoat the, the golden employee all the praise, making the scapegoat employees jealous. So the scapegoat employees might not like the golden employee. You see. That's how isolation works in the workplace as well, because people don't want to be around the golden employee because they feel like he might tell or she might tell or they just like, you know, they're brown. What do you call them? Brown noser or whatever. You know, you stick, you stick your face in somebody's butt. You're going to be in a brown noser. But that happens just like that right there in that space. They turn people against each other in the workplace. And just like the lower level uh, narcissistic person in the workplace, they love to when a plan comes together. They love being able to take credit for everything that it happened, that it happened, everything positive that happens within the space, within this dynamic, you know, that's how it goes. That's how it happens. That's the space that a lot of people fall into. That's the dynamic that a lot of people fall into. So you have to be ready for that in the workplace. Because in this stuff, y'all, I'm not trying to make it seem like it's easy. I know this stuff. I know it's tough dealing with the narcissist. I am a narcissist. I have a personality disorder. I understand the space that, that, uh, that a lot of y'all fall into. But Thank y'all for tuning into this episode, y'all. If you haven't already, make sure you subscribe to my the, to this channel. You subscribe to my newsletter. My very first video series and course community will be released here in the next week or so. It's the seven stages of narcissistic abuse. Understanding narcissistic abuse from the perspective of a narcissist, y'all. It's going to be well in depth. The link to my uh, newsletter is in the description of every video and podcast that I do. Make sure you subscribe to this channel. Make the this out. Peace. Thank you so much for making it to the end of my video. You are a mental healness rock star and I appreciate you for being here. If you haven't already, make sure to click on the screen to subscribe to the channel and watch another one of my videos in my playlist. There's also a link available up here for you to purchase my kids book. Remember, it's not your fault on Amazon. So check that out. Thank you. I will see you in the next video. Peace.